Dominion, supreme power and authority, control or domination. But dominion isn't just given, it's not just handed over. It takes guts. If you don't have the boldness to stand, then you will fall. No guts, no glory. Dominion isn't just handed over, it's fought for. Which team will conquer them all? Who will have the guts? Who will get the glory? What is going on? Who is excited for Passion Students Summer Camp? I hear some people over there, and that means they know what's going on. That is just a small teaser, a trailer, something to get you a little excited for all the things that we have planned for this summer. And, and speaking of plans for this summer, for those who do not know who I am, my name is Pastor Zach, and I happen to be the youth pastor here at the Fairburn campus. Yes, I am so honored. Oh, thank you so much. I love you guys. I am so honored to be able to share with you. But before I do, I don't think you understand what you just saw. I wish. <laughs> if I had time, I would, but girl, I need my time. Um, I don't think you understand what you just saw, and it's okay. But one of the things that you have to realize is at the beginning of, the, beginning of this year, Pastor Gilbert had a few words that we were supposed to be really focused on for this year, and we've been talking about covenant. And today, we're going to talk about expect. But at summer camp for our students, we're going to dive in to dominion. Having dominion, well, what does that mean? Taking back ground, taking back land for the kingdom. I don't think you understand, but there's people out there who don't know God. And for that reason alone, we understand that there's something and there's an onus on us to go and not just stay where we were, but move a little bit closer to somebody. To pull somebody in. Because there are people who need to be brought back to the kingdom. So each and every single one of our students, we are trying to get to summer camp this year. And it's not just about them, but it's about partnering with you. The way that you can partner with us is through our fundraisers. Our first fundraiser that we have coming up, and which will be our first slide, is our bake sale. We have a bake sale. Woo, 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 woo. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We have a bake sale next Sunday. Someone say next Sunday. Next Sunday, March 20th, we will be having a bake sale, and I want to encourage you to, to um, see Travius. Travia, if you could stand up. She was the one who was on the screen. She did such a good job. So proud of you, Ice Tray. And you can also see Omari. Can you stand up really quickly? Woo, 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 woo. Um, for those who are online, um, Travia was the person who you saw for the comments, and Omari is the person that you will see at the end of the service, closing out the service, just in case you happen to be here next week. But I want to encourage you to go see them, to sign up, to bring something, 
And also, um, next week, make sure that you have a little bit of cash on you, um, that you have your cards on you. We take cash, cards, check. We are so versatile. <laughs> uh, we want to make sure that you are there helping support our students who get to summer camp. And we also have another fundraiser coming up. And it's going to be April 3rd, and it is a pie a pastor. Um, uh, I'm going to be honest with you. Some of you guys are like, why would I pie a pastor? If you um, uh, um, know that there's some of us that we, we don't take ourselves too seriously. It, it is okay, because we are doing this for the sole purpose of helping people to get to summer camp. It's a fundraiser to help get students, because my goal is I'm going into all of the schools in Fed County. I've been in Rising Star already. I go to Sandy Creek when I can. I'm trying to get back into all of the schools and start bringing people who may not have the money to get to camp. That is why we as a church need to go ahead and be prepared to help students who have no money to get to camp. Because when they get to camp, they have the opportunity to have a life change. And we talk about investing in the next generation. Well, this generation is going through something now. So let's invest in them. Now, and this is just the beginning. We're going to have other fundraisers coming up, and I want to encourage you, if you have a student, to make sure that you get them there. If you have a neighbor, make sure you let their parents know that they need to be there. If you have a friend of a friend of a friend who knows someone who's below 18, you need to make sure that you get them there. Because I truly believe that their life can be changed. I don't just believe it. I expect it. Thank you, Dad. Expectations, such a powerful thing. And it's, it's so funny because that was one of the words that Pastor Gilbert gave us at the beginning of the year. Expect. All 2022, expect. And he set me up because as soon as he said that, I felt like I had a word from God. I didn't tell him. I was like, if the time comes up, then I'll share it. If the time doesn't come up, it's okay. But I had a word. And the word dealt with expect and expectations. And I think it's important for us to get on the same basis. Because when you're expecting something, you have to really know what's going to come after it. Like for me, in 2022, I'm just going to give you a quick definition of what I believe expectations mean. And by my definition, I mean what it says online. <laughs> Not that smart. <laughs> Expectations. To regard something as likely to happen. To believe that someone or something will arrive soon. Expectations. Regard something as likely to happen. To believe that someone or something will arrive soon. Can I be honest with you? The arrive soon part is a difficult part when you don't have the exact timeline of when it's going to be there. If we're being really, really honest, that's what made the pandemic so difficult. If we all knew that in a year the pandemic was over, we all could have done exactly what we needed to do to make sure that it ended in a year. But because it was such a, we don't know when it's gonna end, it made it so much more difficult, so much more impossible for us to really have the right expectations. But I'm trying to encourage you that as New City Church, we are called to expect this year. But just because we are called to expect this year, we need to go ahead and set ourselves up for success. And the way you can do that is to know what to expect when you're expecting. If I had a title for a message, it would be what to expect when you're expecting. And can, can I give a quick disclaimer? Anybody okay with that? Are you okay with that online? I hope you're okay with that online. Um, so uh, my wife is not pregnant. Say it again. My wife is not pregnant. Because when you hear someone talking about what to expect when you're expecting, you're like, this is an announcement. Surprise. Uh, this isn't what that is. <laughs> this is the opportunity for you and me to get on the same page of what God it's trying to set up for us and for what we need to know about having the proper expectations and how to live those proper expectations. I think it's very valuable when we begin to understand that God 
And so many different passages have given us some things that other men and women of God have had to deal with when they were expecting something from him. And, and a better analogy would be, so it would be like me saying, uh, if I expect to be able to go to the top of the roof, I'm going to leave the stage right now, go to the top of the roof, and I expect to be able to jump off and float, you'd be looking at me like, hey, dog, <laughs> I don't know why you're doing that. That don't make no sense. But can, I, can, can we be real for a quick second? Sometimes I realize that that's what we do. We have expectations that God's going to do something in our life that doesn't match with what the laws say. The law of gravity says that if I jump off, then I'm going to fall because that's anything that goes up will come down, right? But we have that same type of expectation. We expect God to do something in our lives, but we don't back it up by the covenant and the promises that are in the word of God. If it's not backed up by the promises that are in the word of God, I'm here to let you know it's not going to happen. You should not expect that. So make sure everything, when we're talking about expectations, are backed up and solidified by the word of God. Know your covenant promises, so then when you are saying, I expect this to happen, you have some kind of baseline for it. If we don't have a baseline, it would be really, we would look a little silly. So, for everybody in the room, you should have got a card when you came in. For those online, you did not receive a card, but it is okay. What I want you to do right now is to pull out a phone, a tablet, um, some paper and a pen. If you did not get a piece of paper when you walked in, um, there will be a couple people walking around. If you could just slip up your hand, we would love to make sure that you got um, one of these forms. We got a couple over here. We got a couple over there. We got a couple airware. Um, on that form, on that form while they're passing it out, it says what to expect when you're expecting. What to expect when you're expecting. So, what I want you to do right now, since Pastor Gilbert gave us this directive at the beginning of the year, I want you to write down two or three things that you are expecting God to do in your life this year. Two or three things that you're expecting God to do in your life this year. If you're online, like I said, you can write it um, in your phone, on the iPad, in a computer. You can um, paper and pen, old school. Um, all the young people are like, what is paper? <laughs> we don't even use that in school anymore. We do everything on tablets. Like, you know, I can't even relate. Um, <laughs> <laughs> They're like, no, we do pass this at. Okay. Um, but legitimately take a moment just to write down two or three things that you are expecting God to do in your life this year. And if you're not, I'm watching. Hey, listen to the man of God. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> not going to go that far. But for real, I just want to encourage you to make sure that you write two or three things down that you are expecting God to do this year. I would encourage you, if you're in the building, to write it on the piece of paper. Because I think it's really, really powerful when you have something that you can set up on your, um, on your mirror, on your dashboard, somewhere that you can go back and see it and be praying for it. Don't just expect God to do something and then never look or talk or think about it again. Expect God to do something, and then as we will see later, there is going to be some stuff that we have to do as well. And... While we're talking about expectations, I'm going to give you a quick overview while you're still writing down of where we are going to go today. We are going to be talking through the passage of Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Luke is actually, um, if I'm being honest, uh, not my favorite gospel. I know you're like, you have a non-favorite gospel. If I have a favorite, that means I have to have a non-favorite. So um, uh, Luke is actually not my favorite gospel, but I love the way in Luke chapter 1, we see 80, roughly 75 to 80 percent of Luke chapter 1 talking about a few main characters, and that is Elizabeth and Zechariah. But that whole passage is primarily focused on for the other main character who is there and has a really important role to play for the Bible, but is not the person primarily talks about, and that is Mary. 
But Elizabeth and Zechariah, I'm going to give you a quick overview, then we're going to look into a little bit of scripture. We're going to have some points. We're going to go home. Cool with everybody? Cool with you in the building? Let me see. Let me get a thumbs up if you're cool. I'm just used to youth ministry. Let me get a thumbs up in the chat if you are cool. If you are not, um, get cool. Uh, I feel like this is what the Lord told me to do, so we're going to do it anyway. Um, so quick um, backstory. The first few verses we see that Luke is a doctor and he's writing this account so everybody can be on the same page of what actually happened in scripture. Then we see, starting at verse 6, we see that um, we learn a little about Zechariah and Elizabeth. A little bit later, there's a miracle that happens because Elizabeth, who has been barren, who was not able to have a child, gets pregnant because of God. It is a miracle. She's actually a little bit older, but she's still able to have a child. It comes out of nowhere in their eyes. Then a little bit later, we see that uh, Zechariah kind of believed the angel of the Lord, but kind of didn't. So he kind of got his mouth shushed. Then a little bit later, we see that Elizabeth finds out that she's pregnant. Then Mary we go to her story, we find out a little bit about Mary, that she's going to um, give birth to Jesus Christ, like our Lord and Savior. Then a little bit later, we go back and we see that um, Mary's going to visit Elizabeth. Then Mary's going to have a song of praise because of all the things that God has done in her life. And then we're going to see the birth of a great man, a man that a lot of us know, which is John the Baptist. Very quick general synopsis. Now we're going to dive a little bit more into it. I just want to give you that so then you have some context of where we're going with the scripture. Because like I said, this is all about what to expect when you're expecting. Someone repeat it with me. What to expect when you're expecting. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for who you are. God, I thank you for what you are doing in and through us. God, I ask that you would just give us wisdom and strength, clarity. I think that the words that you give me will be yours and that I would just be able to say them in a clear manner that people would understand. I thank you that your word never returns void and that you are our king and everything that we need. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So we're going to go to that first scripture. And we're in Luke chapter 1, starting at verse 6. Zechariah and Elizabeth were righteous in God's eyes, careful to obey all the Lord's commandments and regulations. They had no children because Elizabeth was, in, was unable to conceive, and they were both very old. Verse 8 says, One day Zechariah was serving God in the temple, for his order was on duty that week. We're going to stop just for a quick second. I think it's really, really powerful and important for you to understand when you are serving or becoming who God is calling you to be, often that is when he is going to reveal something powerful to you. So we have our guest fusion today, Believe, Belong, Become. It's important for you to not just believe Jesus Christ. That's important, a thousand percent. But it's also important for you to belong to a local church and people who can hold you accountable. But we can't forget the last step. We have to become active participants in what God is trying to do. When you are an active participant, you know what you're doing and what you're saying to the Lord? You can trust me. I am committed and devoted not just to the fact that you saved me, but I'm committed and devoted to the fact, to the point where I'm going to put in work to show how much I appreciate the fact that you saved me. So if you have not already become an active participant here at New City Church, I would like to challenge you. There are so many different areas for you to serve. And when you are serving, don't be surprised if that's when God begins to reveal what he wants to reveal to you. When you're not focusing on what's going on in your own life, then he'll show up. Focus on somebody else and see what he also does for you. And when you're serving someone else, it's amazing. Someone's life is going to be changed. It might be theirs, but it definitely will be yours. So and we're going to skip a couple of verses. We're going to go to verse 11. 
And it says, while Zechariah was in the sanctuary, an angel of the Lord appeared to him. Whoa, I would have been scared. Standing to the right of the incense altar. Zechariah was shaken and overwhelmed with fear when he saw him. But the angel said, don't be afraid, Zechariah. That's how I imagine they speak. <laughs> Maybe it's just me, but that's always how I Don't be afraid, Zechariah. God has heard your prayer. Your wife Elizabeth will give a son, and you, will, you are to name him John. You will have a great joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. I really be doing these voices when I read the Bible. It helps me stay engaged. So if you don't get it, I'm sorry. Um, for he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. He must never touch wine or other alcoholic drinks. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth. For he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. Can I be honest, the first thing that you have to expect when you're expecting is you need to expect to sacrifice. You need to expect to sacrifice. So we're going to jump back and forth between going through the scripture and then also looking at practical cool things that you need to expect when you are expecting. Like I said, my wife is not pregnant. I got you, babe. One of the things that you need to expect when you're expecting, and any mother would be able to tell you, are growing pains. There are physical pain as you get rid of something that you used to not need, as you are getting ready to do something and step into a new season. For any mother, there, there are pains when they're kicking your stomach. There are, um, you might get sick in the morning but that's because you are trying to expel stuff that you don't need anymore as you are getting ready to birth something a little bit better. Something else when we talk about expecting sacrifice is you need to expect monetary and practical investment. So that's why we have this. When you're expecting God to do something, if we're being fully transparent, there are some things that you're going to have to spend time or money on. Like if you knew, man, I'm dark. If you knew, <laughs> I mean, I knew this beforehand, but doing, um, it's okay. I love my skin. <laughs> but for real. If you knew that you had a baby coming and you didn't buy anything to prepare, but sometimes, isn't that what we do? We ask God, God, I just want you to show up and do this in my life. Cool. You're going to have to put some actual money, time. You might have to go see an expert. You might have to um, do a little bit of research. And then we're like, but, 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 uh, uh, but God, uh, <laughs> I thought you would just download it all to me, that you would provide everything for me. And he's like, I can, but I want you to have some skin in the game. Because when you have a little bit of skin in the game, you're a little bit less likely to give up. You have to expect to put some money and some practical research. So I was watching this show the other day. Um, my favorite genre is probably like mystery. Like I'm a mystery person. So I was watching this show. Some of you guys may know it. Some of you young folk be, may be like, I've never heard of this. There was this character back in the day, and his name was Perry Mason. Who knows who Perry Mason is? Um, Perry Mason 
is the man. I, I love Lisa Perry Mason. Um, I love some old school shows. I am a Murder, She Wrote type of guy, a Matlock type of person. That is my jam. Some of y'all like, the young folks are like, I didn't know what that is. Don't worry about it. This ain't for you right now. <laughs> this is for the people who are a little bit seasoned who understand the greatness of some of these shows. And the reason I love Perry Mason, so they actually did a recent new adaptation. And it was crazy. It was like, it was still set in the old days, but it's just, they redid it. New char I mean, same characters, but like, they did a little bit of his origin, how he got where he was and all that stuff. I was like, okay, that's pretty interesting. One thing that I thought was hilarious. So there's um, this character in there and his wife is pregnant, right? And she's getting ready to give birth and he actually comes into some money. And his wife is like, what are we going to spend this money, y'all? I was like, oh, I relate. He's like, what are we going to spend this money, y'all? What are we going to spend? And she was like, okay, we should try baby powder. I was like, whew, make me feel old. <laughs> we should try baby powder. I know that your mom used cornstarch. My mom used cornstarch. Your mom before that used corn. Everybody on our block used cornstarch. But I think we should try this new thing called baby powder. I was like, huh? But can I be honest? Don't sometimes we just do what everybody else has done because everybody else has already done it? When you're trying to do something new, you have to do something different than what happened before. And you also have to do some research for yourself. I love my parents, but I can't just rely on them for what God wants to do in my life. If he's revealing something new to me, then I need to have time with him as he's revealing it to me. And for us, one of the most easy and practical ways that we can make sure that we understand what is going on is for us to read the manual ourselves, for us to read the Bible for ourselves. It can't just be a Sunday morning thing. It can't be a Wednesday nights around the table thing by itself. Those things are fantastic. But that in and of itself is not enough. You need to read the Bible for yourself. So when God says something in your life, you know the promise that is associated with it. You know the covenant that God has already made about what he's saying for your life. Read the Bible for yourself. And I know I'm saying that. Some of you guys are like, I do that all the time. But I would encourage you, you can do it more. Can we be real? When you're really getting ready to expect something, I, I hear so many parents are like, okay, I've read five books, I've listened to 10 podcasts, I've talked to 25 people that I know, and they're like, but I feel like I'm not prepared. You won't be fully prepared. And it's okay. Because there has to be still some level of faith that you have in God to do it. You can do all the research you need, but at the end of the day, make sure you're still trusting God. Another reason that you should expect sacrifice is, one, we have growing pains. Two, we have monetary and practical investment. Three, we have the time investment. But one thing that we can't discount and that is super important is when you have faith God will do something, there are instant things that God does, but there are things that take a long time to happen. The things that take a long time oftentimes is for our maturation. Because if we got it instantly, we would not have the character to go or do what God is calling us to. So if you had a baby and you, you got pregnant and instantly the baby came out, you would be like, whoa, I ain't got no diaper, I ain't got no crib, I ain't got, I ain't got no clothes. <laughs> Uh, I'm not prepared, that'd be crazy. It, it, it's not solely for what you're trying to get. It's so you can be prepared. So you should be able to expect to need to sacrifice because really the sacrifice isn't even for God, it's for you. Because God already knows and God already sees. So we're going to keep reading. That cool with everybody? Cool. I'm glad you answered yes because it was going to be a yes anyway. <laughs> Let's go to that next scripture. 
Verse 18. We skipped a couple of verses, but we'll jump back to them later. Zechariah said to the angel, how can I be sure this will happen? I'm an old man now. My wife is well along in years. That's how I know he didn't say this with his wife right next to him. Because she would have looked at him and like, I'm what? And I was like, oh, Lord. Um, then the angel said, I am Gabriel. I stand in the very presence of God. It was he who sent me to bring you this good news. But now, since you didn't believe what I said, like I said, the first thing you have to do is believe. You will be silent and unable to speak until the child is born. For my words will certainly be fulfilled at the proper time. Meanwhile, before we get to the meanwhile, am I the only person who ever asks God to do something in my life? God. I will do it. Us. So can you give me a sign that you'll do it? Or uh, how am I supposed to know? And it's like, we need to be spiritually maturing to the point where God just saying, yes, I will, is all we need. And we don't need a sign. It's very easy for us to want a sign. Something we can see, but the, the, the things we can see don't really take faith. If I could see it the whole time, what? I have faith in this table. Well, duh, I hit it. But, but sometimes that's our lives. God, I'm having faith for this. Uh, I mean, you're, you're, you're looking at it. You're talking to it. I want to encourage us. Let's be so secure in who God is. That as soon as he gives the word that it is done, then we're confident that it will come to pass. We don't know when and we don't know how, but that's not for us to know. And then we see verse 20. It says, thank you so much. But now since you did not believe what I said, you will be silent. He closed his mouth. Then we're going to go down a couple verses. I'll give you a quick synopsis. Verse 21, the people were waiting for Zechariah to come out. There was a crowd around. When he finally did come out, he couldn't speak to any of them because he got his mouth closed. Verse 23 is where we're going to pick right back up. Thank you so much. I didn't mean to put all this on you, Nick. You're great. Um, when Zechariah, week of service in the temple was over, he returned home. Verse 24, Soon afterward, his wife, Elizabeth, became pregnant and went into seclusion for five months. How kind the Lord is, she exclaimed. He has taken away my disgrace of having no children. Can, can I um, encourage you really quickly? That if you feel like there's something that has caused you to be disgraced before the Lord, he can take that and be the same, allow it to be the same thing that other people will know that God is real about. So maybe you went through a situation where you've been a, abandoned. God will use that, and then other people will know there must be a God who brings people into his family. Maybe you felt like um, you, you've been uh, mistreated because of your race. God will use that and allow other people to know that God accepts us because he created us in our mother's womb. God will take whatever has been used as a thing that has taken you down, either in your mind or actual practically, and he can use that and turn that to be the thing that gets him glory and allows other people to know that he truly is real. But you have to realize, kind of like we just read in that passage, there were people around. They, they got a word from God. And there were people around. And everybody in their mind, I imagine. So we know that he saw something while he was in the temple because he can't talk. And I imagine everybody else began to speak up for him. Oh, maybe he saw this. Maybe this is what happened. Because I know that's how we are sometimes. Oh, they think God's doing that in their lives? 
So the next thing that you have to be expecting is you need to expect feedback. Expect feedback. People will always have something to say. They always do. And, and in fact, I imagine some people have something to say all throughout this video. If we could go ahead and play that failed video. Oh, that's a pitch. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, no. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Everybody has something to say about what God, what you're believing and expecting God to do in your life. Oh, you shouldn't have done it like that. Or, or, or better yet, if we're being honest, like I said, Zachariah got his mouth closed. Elizabeth went into seclusion. I think one of the reasons Zachariah got his mouth closed after he questioned God is because it would have been really easy for him to be like that little girl at the end. Because sometimes we're like that. Anybody ever just, like, have one of them breakdowns, crying, screaming, like, I can't believe <laughs> Because if we're being honest, we love for God to do something in our lives. But when it takes a little bit of a toll on us, sometimes we don't respond the right way. Oh, God, I need you to show up in this area. God shows up in this area, but it doesn't look like what you wanted. It didn't look like what she wanted. She wanted a sister. It was a brother. Oh, God. Ah. Uh, 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 can, can we do it different? Can we redo? <laughs> redo, God. I know you're the author of time, so we can just rewind this and you do it the way that I wanted it because I know better than God. We don't say it, but sometimes we think it. Everybody has an opinion on the way that your dream is supposed to look like. On what... You want God to do in your life, everybody has a way that it should look or it should be done. Can I be fully real with you guys? You need to make sure that the people that you're allowing to have feedback in your life are actually on your side. And the part that's the realest is not everyone who's a Christian is actually really on your side. It's tough to tell you. I'm sorry I had to be the bearer of bad news. But not everyone who's a Christian is fully on your side. Because if they are, that might mean that they lose something. And if we're real, we want more for us than we are, want for other people. Even though in Scripture it says, esteem others higher than ourselves. It's almost like you need to know the word for yourself. So, well, when that happens, if you're expecting feedback, you have a couple of options. You can either be like Zachariah, or you can be like Elizabeth. Elizabeth, what she did is what I would choose to do. I seclude myself for a moment. Not from everybody, 
but from too many outside voices. Allowing the primary voice I hear to be God and then other very trusted people around me who only want the best for me. And if you don't do that, then what happens is you end up being like Zechariah. You get your mouth closed for you. You'll go into a season where nobody wants to listen to you. You'll go into a season where you feel like you're forced to be alone. And realistically, that's a little bit more difficult for us to understand and for us to handle. Can you imagine? He was silent for more than nine months. I, 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 I can't imagine. I mean, I like to talk so much. It's wild. But legitimately, I think sometimes for us, we have to choose to either seclude ourselves or allow God to seclude us. And when you, you begin to speak too negative about what God can do, he's only going to allow slander on his name and on the word of God for so long. So we're going to go back into the scripture. But I'm going to give you a little bit of context of what is about to happen. Like I said, so we just see that Elizabeth is exclaiming because she is pregnant. She secludes herself. Then the next thing that we see is um, the angel go to Mary. We're all pretty familiar with that if we've been here for a Christmas Eve service. An angel goes to Mary. Mary's like, who, me? And he's like, yeah, you. And it's just like, it's a miracle. It's amazing. She was a virgin. Then the next thing that happens is you have to realize Mary and Elizabeth are kin. So a few days later, in verse 39, it says, A few days later, Mary hurried to the hill country of Judea, to the town where Zechariah lived. She entered the house and greeted Elizabeth. At the sound of Mary's greeting, Elizabeth's child leaped within her because he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then the next thing we see is Mary does this song of praise. So the next thing that you need to do is you need to expect praise. You need to expect people to try to praise you for what God has done and give that praise to the right person. And you need to begin to expect to need to praise God for what he is still doing through the growing pains, through the investment, through the time, through the feedback. Begin to praise God because he is worthy of all the praise and all the honor. Even if what your dream is doesn't come true, he is still worthy of the praise. He is still worthy of us singing, of us dancing, of us shouting. He's still worthy of us sacrificing. He's still worthy of us thanking him. He is still worthy. He's still worthy, and he will never not be worthy. Did you remember that God was worthy today? Look to your neighbor and say, God is worthy. Put it in the chat. God is worthy because my God is worthy of all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. I don't care what has happened to your life up to this point. And, and let me say that from this method, that there have been real stuff that has happened to a lot of us. That doesn't discount the fact that it happened. Is just bringing in proper context who God is anyway. In fact, this isn't in my notes. We're going to take a second. I want you to just close your eyes really quick. Bow your heads. Do the same online as well as you can. If you would like to give your life over to Christ, we don't need some you know, music playing. We don't need anything deep. You just need to have a moment with God. And I believe that God is wherever you are, in this room and online. If you would like to give your life over to Christ today, let me tell you, it is the best thing that could ever happen to you. It is a life-changing experience. And I want to give you that opportunity. If you could just slip up your hand, if you're uh, watching online, if you could just um, 
connect with one of our prayer partners. Just slip up your hand if you would like to give your life over to Christ today. Maybe you want to rededicate your life or give your life over to him for the first time. I don't want to move past this moment because before we can believe that God's going to do something miraculous, the first thing he's already done. And that was die on the cross for us. So if there's anybody who would like to give their life over to Christ today, I would like to give you that opportunity right now. Cool. What we're going to do is if you could throw up that salvation prayer. Because I don't think that we have to wait to do it in a certain method. I believe the Holy Spirit goes to us wherever we are, whenever we need him. And I feel like we need him right now. So thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for me. I know that I am a sinner. And I repent for my sins. Come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. Today I have been made new. From this day forward, I will follow you. Amen. And I want to encourage you, if you pray that prayer for the first time, or if you really rededicated your life, there will be some prayer partners up here at the very end of service. There's some prayer partners online for you right now. Make sure that you are connecting with somebody. Because while we don't want feedback from negative people, it's important for us to have a core group around us who can be accountability, who can hold us, and who can support us through what is a difficult walk, but a walk worth it. A thousand percent worth it. So my last real point today. We're going to start with the point. All the, ones, the other ones we started with the scripture, but let's start with the point. You need to expect bigger than yourself. You don't have to raise your hand. But I want you to consider, was the thing that you were expecting a raise, a new car? Was the thing that you're expecting um, clothes, shoes? Was the thing that you're expecting something that only benefits yourself? Because ultimately, your expectation should bless somebody else and not just yourself. At the end of the day, your expectations, what you're believing God for, what you know that he can do, shouldn't just benefit me, but it should benefit other people around me. My family, my friends, my coworkers, my neighbors. So I'm going to give a quick story. Um, because I feel like it's important for us to realize that not everything goes perfect the way that you expect. So at the end, uh, at the beginning of 2021, um, my wife and I moved. We moved out of our first apartment into another house. And this house had um, four bedrooms. It had a two-car garage. It had a washer and dryer that came with it. It had an unfinished basement. It had... um, large master bedroom. It had a large open space. We were even able to have my family over for Thanksgiving. It had, it was nice. It was nice. It it was nice. But can I be honest? I wanted something different, but I don't know that I chose the right thing. I chose what I thought was best instead of fully listening to what God was saying was best. And what I'm here to let you know is God provided every step of the way. We didn't miss no bills. We had plenty of food. We were able to go on a trip. So God showed up even though I chose the wrong thing. And then at the beginning of this year, we moved again to a place that's a one-bedroom, to a place Um, that's further away from my workplace, further away from her workplace. We had to get rid of a whole bunch of stuff, tables, clothes, um, items that I was like prepping. I was like, okay, I'm going to have this for a long time. We had to get rid of a lot of it. 
but I am more confident now than I ever have been that we are exactly where we're supposed to be. Thank you. You can clap for that. <laughs> and, and the reason that I am is because I know that where I'm at now, I have an assignment. I have neighbors to the right of me, in front of me, below me, in this apartment. And I am expecting and believing that I'm going to win somebody for Christ. I expected one thing, and it was good. But when you have godly expectations, the right view, then what you should be expecting shouldn't just be good, but should be life-changing. But not just for you, but for somebody else. In Luke 1.14, it says, He will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and in power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. What you should be expecting is for God to do something that impacts somebody else's life. Because the way that God works is he will give you something that you want that is good for you. But when you know it's fully from him, somebody else's life will also be better. We read earlier that um, John was going to be the person who paved the way for Jesus. We just read that he was going to bring joy bring parents and children back together, bring the disobedient to be righteous. And when I tell you that what you should be expecting from God should be something that goes exceedingly more than you could ever think or imagine. And if it's not, you're expecting too little. What you expect shouldn't just be something for you, but be something given back over to the Lord because it was his in the first place. What you are expecting from God should be something so powerful that when other people see it, they should know that God is real because they see what you were expecting. Like Micah mentioned last week, when they saw, um, what's that man's name? Uh, The guy from last week, what is his name? Patrick, thank you. One of them days. When, when they saw Patrick, they knew that he loved God, and that's what they talked about. When they see what you're expecting, and it comes to pass because it will, they should know that they know that they know. I didn't believe before, but I know God is real. And God is doing something. So, for the altar call today, we're going to flip it, and we're going to do something a little bit different. You can go, hit, go ahead and hit that music, Wayne, because what I want you to do is I want you to flip over that card that you had. For those watching online, I'll give you instructions in just one moment. I want you to flip over that card, and I want you to write down at least just one one prayer that is not focused on you at all, but something that you can believe and expect God to do in somebody else's life. I want you to write that down, and then afterwards, this is the passion in me, this is the youth leader in me, I want you to stand up, find someone else in the room, and exchange that one thing. I'm going to give you two minutes, because I believe that accountability is important. Don't just go to your spouse, find somebody else in the room. I know you were going to try to go out that way. You're like, okay, I could just do that. I see you, Megan and Philip. I love you. Uh, yeah, um, gotcha. Um, I, I want to encourage you to go find someone else in the room because it's important for us to have accountability within the church that we belong to. And for those who are watching online, you are not discounted. I want you to put something in the chat that you are believing God to do in somebody else's life. I want you then to text somebody to hold you accountable to that. And if you need even more help, you can go to newcitychurch.net and there's a prayer tab and one of the prayer partners or one of the pastors would love to connect with you or at least be praying for that for you. Because we are a church together. 
You belong to me and I belong to you. So I can stand up and I can support you in what you are believing, not just for yourself, but for the kingdom of God. Because we should be expecting God to do something this year. So if you are ready, go ahead and stand up. Don't stand up now if you are ready. You don't have to um, move yet, but you can go ahead and stand up so I can see kind of approximation of who is ready. We're going to give you two minutes. Nick, you can hit that last slide. The what to expect when you're expecting. And I wanna, I'm going to give you two minutes. I want to encourage you to make sure that you go find someone else in the room. If you are done, go ahead and stand up. I am watching, like literally watching you. So um, <laughs> listen to the word of the Lord because this isn't from me. This is from him. I want to encourage you to stand up, find somebody, pray for them, and then check in on them in the future. This is not a one-week assignment. All my students understand this is something that we are going to do week after week until we see what we were expecting to happen. You can go ahead and start moving. Go ahead and start moving. You can go ahead and start moving. You can go ahead and start texting your people online. If you are watching online, you can go ahead and start texting people online. Just one more time. One thing that you are expecting God to do that doesn't involve yourself. One thing you are expecting God to do that doesn't involve yourself. You have a minute and a half. 